What kind of cardboard do we want to be using in our worm bin? Do we want it to be the corrugated kind of cardboard or do we want cereal box type of cardboard? We're going to cover that on today's short episode of Coffee and Compost. My name is Steve Churchill and I own the Urban Worm Company. So when it comes to finding a carbon rich bedding source uh, for your worm bin or even for your compost pile, a lot of people want to know about cardboard and what kinds of cardboard are acceptable. I'm going to give you this spoiler here that when it comes to choosing cardboard, uh, you want to be using a corrugated form of cardboard. So corrugated cardboard, it has at least three layers. It's got two paper layers in between which is this kind of corrugated wavy sort of fluting and it's held together by glue. So even though that uh, corrugated cardboard is gonna be thicker than the cardboard that you would find with the cereal box, uh, it is gonna be much better because it's got kind of those nooks and crannies and a lot more surface area for the oxygen, for the microbes, and eventually the worms to be attacking. The other thing too is that corrugated cardboard has that glue, which is kind of a starchy, uh, starchy substance that for some reason worms just love to eat. So they consider it, they consider it a food, and I think that that's what's one of the things that makes uh, corrugated cardboard really attractive to worms. So here's a dirty little secret when it comes to uh, cereal boxes. They are not actually even cardboard. They're something called paperboard or chipboard. Uh, they are very dense. It's sort of this densely but you know thinly rolled. Um, substance that is made from recycled cardboard in most cases but is actually doesn't end up being cardboard. Uh, they are kind of rolled with this uh, clay material that helps kind of aggregate all the little particles together into this really dense, thin but dense material. These boxes also kind of have a waxiness to them which uh, probably protects the ink uh, so uh, that is going to be something that sort of retards how quickly they're going to break down as well. Now, one thing about the ink, a lot of people are concerned when it comes to using paper or cardboard about um, the pollutants that might be in ink. Uh, I think those concerns are overblown. Um, a lot of people are worried about the uh, about uh, the metals that might be in ink. Now, I know in the U.S. and in North America, most inks are made from a soy-based type material that is is meant to be much more environmentally friendly. I can't speak to packaging that is uh, made overseas, but in the U.S., uh, most inks are going to be uh, made from that soy-based material. So you should be good to go, whether putting it in your worm bin or into your compost pile. So guys, um, one thing I want to let you know about is I've got this guide here at the Urban Worm Company that helps new vermicomposters avoid some very common mistakes. I answer a lot of questions for folks uh, really every week, but I've been doing it for the past few years and I noticed that people are making one or more of six different mistakes. So I created this handy little guide. You can uh, This little link up here above my uh, left shoulder uh, is going to lead you to a page where you can sign up and get this guide. And I think it's going to help you avoid some landmines uh, as you uh, either start or continue your vermicomposting journey. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll talk to you again on the next episode of Coffee and Compost. See ya.